Hi everybody, uh, today I am back and I'm going to show you how to integrate a promise within your um, callback based API. What um, sparked this video is that I'm currently working through a lot of um, JavaScript authentication applications and having to write a lot of code. Now some of these methods use callbacks. However, um, I am writing this in 2018 and I'd like to use things like async await and the high level promise support, in which case I want to make a lot of my APIs not only callback, um, you know, being able to use by a callback, but also as a promise. This video is also going to be released uh, along with a blog post that goes into more details on the, you know, how to write a callback function as well as how to write a promise function and how to write them together. And then what we're going to do right now is do it. We're going to implement a promise into this function that I have here, this file. Uh, and we're just going to go through that process. So start out, um, what you're looking at is the Fastify JSON web token auth Z. Now this is a Fastify plugin that I have written and it adds the method check scopes. And this is a um, this is an authentication feature that takes a JSON web token and the user that is verified by that token, and then it goes ahead and it checks if they are currently able to access the scope of the API. It's implemented over here in my server. You'll notice that I have a before handler that has a chain of functions. The first one verifies that the user is well like authenticated and that their token is valid and then it passes that to the next function here and this function is what uses the json web token auth z and you can see this is the array and right now i have a callback in here and in fact i also had a callback up here as well and within this callback it actually is calling the callback method of the before handler chain i know there's a lot of callbacks here we're not gonna, I'm not gonna get into too much details about this. We can save that for another video, but I'm gonna dive right into coding. So first of all, um, we're going to review one more time what this function is doing. So we start out and we have, we can, but what's happening up here is we're importing Fastify plugin, which is a library necessary to export the plugin itself. Then we have the function that we are actually importing into the file and it's going to get the fastify instance as well as options as well as a callback next when we start up we want to decorate the fastify instance or in fact the request instance of fastify with the method jwt auth z and that's going to be in reference to check scopes and then when we're done we're just going to call next we're actually calling this is a callback right here and this returns back to the page. And you can see this being implemented up above when we register JWT auth Z right here. Great. The check scopes function takes the first parameter is scopes. This is an array and the array cannot be empty. And then the callback, and this is a callback based method at the moment. And we use this callback and in the standard way where the first option is an error and then if it's you know if we're good then we actually will pass um, we'll just pass null because there really isn't anything to return here except an error this will first run through some error checking it makes sure that the scopes exist it also makes sure that the request object has a user um, in this function the this keyword actually refers to the request instance of Fastify. And we also check that the scope of the user is a string, or actually we check that it, if it isn't, then we are throwing an error. Next, we split this string up by the space, and then we run through that list, or the list of scopes that was passed to this function. And if some of them pass this method right here, if at least basically at least one of them exists within the scopes, then that user is going to be allowed to um, access this API route. And 
we return the callback and we check is it allowed if so then null because there's no error to report otherwise we're going to say insufficient scope and then finally we're exporting the function at the very bottom or the plugin cool so the callbacks here we have four callback methods and we're going to be able to implement this promise integration without even having to change any of the current code. We're only going to be adding. To start off, we're going to check if callback is undefined, then we're going to return a new promise. This promise is going to take the function and it's going to have resolve reject. And in here, we're actually going to be able to call this dot JWT auths. Now this is a little confusing. In the article you'll notice that we're able to call this dot and then the function method. And while this may work here, I'd rather do this because the this object is actually pointing to the fastify request. And because of this line right here, we're actually mapping this method check scopes to the dot JWT auth parameter. And we know that because we're using it over here already request dot JWT auth Z. Then we're going to pass the scopes object from above. And now we're going to define another callback. And in this callback, we're going to have the error. And that's it. Now, in most most of the times you would also have a result here but because in this particular instance there is nothing to actually send back except an error we only really need to worry about the error parameter from here we're going to be able to return or in fact we're going to be able to just to check our we'll, we'll use return return error if it exists then we're just going to reject it otherwise we can just resolve null Great. And now if we save this, let's go into our terminal and let's run the API. Now the API is going to point to this file here, server. So we'll go ahead and run npm run dev. This will start up nodemon. Cool. We'll go over to the client. Um, we're not going to get where we will visit the client. Uh, we won't be visiting the client today. Um, that'll be for another video. But um, just know that I am using create react app. And it should open up in our browser over here. Great. So we know that it's built. So let's go quickly back over here. I want to change back to the API. I currently have in the server, I currently have some logs that will tell us that everything is running smoothly. So right now, let's make sure that the callback method use of this API still works. Well, first we'll log in. Then, using the test fetch button, you'll see we're actually able to create a fetch request. This fetch request is very simple. It's actually just pointing to API. And then right now, I only have it set up to test to make sure this authentication functions work. And you'll notice that JWT auth Z is being logged, and then API endpoint is. And if this threw an error, if this was done, if, if this threw an error here, then we actually would not get to this point in the API. Now let's see if this works as a promise. So instead, we're going to just comment out this line so we can keep it for reference. And we're going to write request dot JWT auth Z. We're going to pass in the same route. And then we're going to write, all right, let's make this a little bit easier to read. We'll go down here and we'll write dot then. And then should get nothing. And we're going to expect that. And we're just going to say to fastify dot log dot info. We're going to say um, valid scope. This will pop up in the console dot log. Next, we're going to write a catch block. The catch block is expecting an error. And here we're actually going to be able to write fastify.log.error and then the error in case it's thrown. Let's save. Let's go back over to our file or to our application. Click test fetch. And you'll see it actually did through an error. 
So let's do some live debugging. What went wrong? Cannot read property JDBT auth Z of undefined. Okay, so let's go back over here. Let's think. Why would this be undefined? Anybody? Well, spoiler alert, this function here is actually overwriting, as well as the promise, is actually overwriting the check scope this and replacing it with itself. And this is an issue with the way kind of closures and the scope of JavaScript functions work. In order to remedy this, all we have to do is say const request equals this. And then we can go ahead and we can just replace this one with the word request, save it. Our server should restart. We'll go back over here. We'll test fetch. And now you'll notice the methods all come in as normal. Now, you'll notice here that even though we that it logged valid scope, it never logged API endpoint. This is not an issue with, with the code that we wrote in this file, but it's in fact the way we're using the code here in the server file. If you notice before, we actually called done error as a callback. So even when error was null, done was still called. Now that we've changed over the promises, we completely left that part out and we need to add that. Otherwise, the before handler actually doesn't know how to advance. Currently, our server is just waiting. It's waiting right here. It says, okay, I've logged that, now what? And basically, it's not gonna go anywhere and it's gonna sit like this. It's not gonna time out. It's just gonna sit here until forever, until we come across and manually restart it. So let's first close the server down and now let's add this function. So we're just gonna call done, just like that. And then in the catch statement, we'll do the same thing because we still want to advance into the route or at least we wanna throw this kind of error so that it, something happens. Because if we call error within the before handler, it'll actually, you know, it'll come up and it'll say error, you can't, you know, you can't go any further. You don't, you know, insufficient, uh, the insufficient rule, it'll say, you know, insuff insufficient scope, you, you can't go, you can't do this. And it'll return that. And the great thing about callbacks and promises is I can take that information and do something with it. I can update the client or I can send another request and say, oh, but I know that this user needs to be thing. So let's go check a different set of, you know, JSON web keys, or let's go and register this user instead and forward them on to a different part of the application. So let's save this. Now that the server has been saved, we can run the dev environment. We'll go back over here and test fetch. This time, the valid scope went through again, the API endpoint was rendered, and the request was completed. And that's about it for implementing a promise inside of a callback-based API. And this isn't the only place I've done this. If you notice in JWT.js, this is included within the article, I actually wrote some pretty large functions here. And I'll close out of the terminal so you guys can see more of the code. These functions are quite long. In fact, the request verify one is pretty substantial. And while we want to support callbacks, we also want to be able to support promises. And in order to do that, but also not have to create a bunch of like sub, you know, sub, like if next equals undefined, then we copy and paste this entire part of the application and then just replace every next keyword with, you know, resolve or reject. We actually just do the same thing where we call the request.jwtverify method with the same options, with the same scope, the same request scope. And just this time with the function, with a callback function of error and value, and if it calls next with an error, it will reject it. But if it doesn't call next and it calls it with just a, with, you know, with null and a value here, it'll resolve. And this will bubble back up to the user. So actually, while we're here, let's go ahead and implement this because if we had the promise working on this route, we might as well test it here as well. So notice we have the same deal going on where we have a sort of, or we have a callback. Now let's go ahead and write request.jwtverify. Uh, 
and we're going to write complete true. This is just an option that I need to pass. We will put this on a new line. And on this line, we're going to write then arrow function. Let's add some fastify.logs in here. We're going to go ahead and say um, verified. And then we'll call done. And then in the catch block, we'll go ahead and say error, And we'll pass out the error parameter, which we'll add here in the error function. And then we'll also make sure that we call done with the error. Let's save that. Let's bring up the terminal again. The server is restarted automatically for us. And we'll write and we'll test the, fe the fetch again. And again, you know, it runs through the same steps. Incoming request, checks the J JSON web token, it verifies itself, then it moves on to the authorization, checks the scope, it returns a valid scope, the API endpoint is reached, and the request is completed. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning today how to, you know, expose your callback-based APIs as uh, and integrate promises into them without editing any current code and just adding new and adding new code. And something we didn't even go over is that with this, you can then actually implement async await because all async await is, is a wrapper on promises. So by just adding this very simple code block that you really only need to, you know, fiddle around with the scope of the function, you have opened up your API to a completely new set of audiences and tools and ES6 uh, ES6 language features um, with only a few lines of code. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Reach out to me on Twitter or GitHub, and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. This is Ethan Arrowhead, and I'll see you in the next one.